Science is a huge field, filled with so many disciplines, all of which are continuously advancing. Whether it is the latest ecological research, or looking at what is happening out there in our solar system, there is sure to be something new being researched and announced at any given time. So today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we will be taking a look at three recent scientific discoveries. Mexican mangrove forest is trapped in time. I am sure most of us are familiar with time capsules. Whether you buried a tin stuffed with newspapers, coins and other treasures as a child, or you watched them get dug up on TV. Now though, it appears that Mother Nature has made a time capsule of her own, preserving a forest of red mangroves in the Yucatan Peninsula, Mexico, in time. Visiting this forest is like turning back the clock by a staggering 100,000 years. We typically see red mangroves, also known by their biological name as Rhizophora mangroves, along tropical coastlines, not because they are enjoying a beachside getaway, but because they can only grow in salt water, making these hot coastal areas the perfect spot to grow. However, this particular mangrove forest can be found near the San Pedro River in Tabasco, a staggering 200 kilometers away from the closest ocean. This ecological puzzle has left questions for many scientists, though a team of researchers from all over the world, covering a broad range of specialist areas of study, think they may have found an answer. An answer that transports us back to 125,000 years in the past. The lead author of this research, Octavio Alberto or a Pisa, a marine ecologist working at the Scripps Institution of Oceanography at the University of California, San Diego, described the mangrove ecosystem as having been trapped in time for more than 100,000 years. He elaborated, describing the research as piecing a lost world back together. To begin unraveling the mystery as to how the coastal saltwater plants ended up in a freshwater environment so far from the coast, the researchers took DNA samples from the trees to be analysed. This aimed to find some key differences between this freshwater mangrove forest and the more regular mangrove trees. Evolutionary geneticist at Queen Mary University of London, Richard Nichols, though not involved with the study, explained that by counting the differences in the genome sequences between the saltwater and freshwater mangrove samples, it would be possible to estimate how long it has been since the two trees had a common ancestor. In this particular research, Nichols explained that the genome mutations appeared at a rate of one in every 300 million letters of genetic code. However, if you are finding the common ancestor between two sample groups, it must come before the two groups split from one another. The research team manages to determine using the method that looks at the number of genetic mutations in the mangrove's DNA, that it has been approximately 125,000 years since these mangroves became isolated from the nearest coastal mangroves. But we have still not talked about why this strange ecological phenomenon has occurred. The current theories assume that this is due to global warming, and that once upon a time, the now landlocked state of Yucatan was once along the coastline. Global warming and the changes in our sea levels have been a point of concern for years and years. Though in more modern discussions, we have talked about sea levels rising, and the sea level has fluctuated up and down many times throughout the Earth's past. This complicated phenomenon is partly due to small shifts in the Earth's orbit around the Sun, impacting the amount of solar radiation we receive. When we have the least amount of solar radiation, the Earth falls into an ice age, when we hit the maximum radiation, we have an interglacial period, causing the ice sheets from the Ice Age to melt away, increasing the sea level in our oceans. Since the last interglacial period ended approximately 120,000 years ago, according to the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, meaning the timeline does line up with the mangrove forest. The working theory is that when the ice sheets melted during the interglacial period, the sea levels rose enough to bring the coastline to Yucatan, allowing saltwater plants such as mangroves to grow. Once the sea levels then dropped again, the once coastal city became entirely land-based, far from the sea, leaving these coastal plants stranded in the middle of the country. Despite this theory seeming to make a lot of sense, to answer our questions, there is one problem. 
The mangrove forest currently sits 30 feet above sea level, and the models we have to estimate the sea levels from the period do not reflect this drastic a change. This means that even in the last interglacial period, the mangrove forest would not have been covered by the sea. It is hoped that this research can help feed into more accurate predictions as to how the changes in sea level due to climate change will impact the future development of the area. We still have lots of questions and speculation surrounding this mangrove forest. Even if the changes in sea levels give us an explanation, we still do not know how the plants all managed to successfully adapt to the freshwater conditions. There is still a large window for future development and research, though these exciting bits of analysis are huge strides forward for now, adding one more piece to the puzzle at a time. Huge solar storm struck the Earth on Halloween Over the Halloween weekend, plenty of us put our skepticism aside and dress up, go on ghost walks and keep our eyes peeled for something creepy and unusual. But what if I told you that spooky aura sighting and strange way your GPS would not load was not the result of the paranormal or the supernatural, but rather the astronomical? On October 29, 2021, a large solar flare erupted from the Sun. This solar flare could have resulted in a coronal mass ejection, hitting the Earth during the Halloween weekend period. A CME means that electrically charged matter is emitted into the nearby magnetic fields and into space as a whole. The solar flare was categorized as an X1 class solar flare, meaning it is ranked as the most powerful. For those unfamiliar with how solar flares are graded, the system is not too dissimilar from earthquakes. NASA described the event as a significant solar flare. Dr. Tamitha Skolf, a space weather physicist, tweeted, a direct hit for Halloween. She continued to explain that the eruptions we could expect here on Earth included aura sightings, amateur radio disruptions, and issues with GPS reception. While this might all sound rather frightening to those of us who do not know much about these solar flares, NASA were quick to provide reassurance, explaining that the harmful radiation that comes from a solar flare cannot pass through the Earth's atmosphere to cause harm to us, Though, if they are of a high enough classification and are intense enough, they can cause some disruptions to some layers of the atmosphere, for instance, impacting GPS and communication signals. Unfortunately, this means that the usual telltale signs that you may have bumped into some lingering spirits could be easier for the non-believers to debunk and dismiss this year. Whilst you can still dress up or head on out on your ghost walk, do not get too excited when you are telling your mates about that spirit you saw and how your Google Maps would not load up because it may just have been the solar flares tricking you. NASA spacecraft just saw the North Pole of Europa. Jupiter has 79 moons, putting Earth's measly one to shame. And with so many moons, it is unsurprising that there is a great deal we do not yet know about them. NASA are on it though, with their spacecraft Juno being sent to orbit Jupiter. Plenty of insights are being frequently sent back to us here on Earth, the most recent of which tells us a little more about Europa, Jupiter's icy moon. Up until now, we have not seen all of Europa, with no photos being taken from a distance and no sightings of the North Pole region. This camera-shy moon has finally been captured by Juno and the results are more exciting than we had guessed. Europa's icy North Pole seems to have water vapor that looks as though it is rising out of the moon in plumes, suggesting the oceans of this planet could have conditions that could be home to life. Looking for signs of life in space, especially within our own solar system, is a thrilling aspect of astronomical research. Up until now, a great deal of research in our own solar system has looked at how the conditions on Mars could have once supported life though now it seems Europa could be a new contender. Admittedly, the photo quality from Juno is poor in the images received so far, with a distance of 50,000 miles between the spacecraft and the moon. The resolution is not spectacular. However, next year, Juno is due to travel just a few hundred miles above the same spot of Europa, giving us a great opportunity to look forward to just on the horizon.
Scott Bolton, the Juno Principal Investigator and Director of the Space Science and Engineering Division of the Southwest Research Institute, described this as a tantalizing example and a taste of what's to come. The advancements we can see just around the corner continue to be just as thrilling as ever. Hopefully more questions and information will be coming our way shortly. Whether we find one more piece of information in a wider piece of research, or we are uncovering some answers to big questions, science is fascinating and the research is never complete. But what do you make of these discoveries? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comments section below and help us by growing this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.